So every teacher needs to find their way to organize their open sci ed and phenomena based learning. So how our school has decided to do is just to use a spiral notebook. And we have a three subject one we use for our kids. And then as the units go through, they fill it up. And so we do a lot of stuff launched on the, their Chromebooks or their devices, but we also keep track of our learning. So how I have done it is on each unit, I give them, I call it a geo journal, because we do a lot of geo, geogra uh, not geography, um, geoscience. And so what I do is I give them an outline of all the driving questions or the unit lessons, and because we're really learning target-based. Our school really wants a lot of focus on that, so this is a way to do that. And then the way we do it is when we have a lesson, I ask kids to title their lessons with each thing. So the phenomena, how can um, containers keep stuff from warming up and cooling down? And so we talk about this claim, and in our lessons, I have the kids title their geo journal. So our first experiment under lesson one, this is the chart that I had them fill out. And then we had to come up with our initial class model, and this is our class's initial class model that, that we discussed together and drew in our geo journal. And so, or the, excuse me, this was, her, this was the student's example model, and then we came up with a class model together, okay? So then, on lesson two, we came up with an experiment. We have the questions, and we have this tabular data, and I have them glue it down, as I've said before, Students are not good drawing tables, so if we give them the tables and glue them, it makes the class go smoother. And then if we found irregularities in the data or questions about the data, we talked about circling it and then analyzing that data, whether it's valid or not valid. And then we had to rate our cups. Then in lesson three, we did them with warm water and we realized that we had to cross off some information. And we rated our cups again. In lesson four, we um, explore the lid and no lid and how that works in our functions. And lesson uh, four continues at looking at different models that I had them use from the, the open sci -Ed material, but I cut out the things I needed. And we came up with a new consensus model after some of that learning that we've talked about. Lesson five, we conduct an experiment in deciding whether the water on the outside of the cup comes from inside the cup. And lesson six, we explored this open SIAD um, document and worked with it to understand materials. Lesson seven is more of a class discussion with the open SIAD curriculum and analyzing a different experiment that was difficult to conduct in class. And then we come up with another class model. And this class is now starting to explore the room temperature and understand the importance and validity of that. Lesson eight, we decide we explore light and um, how they work and interact in light and dark rooms and different material types. Um, and then oh, this got glued in upside down. I often then gave kids time to answer questions and glue in their geo journal. So if you notice, everything's just kind of in their geo journal. Lesson nine, we explore, um, in this instance, um, the double layer and the double layer cups. And then in 10 and 11, this is where I had them work independently, exploring some experiments and filling out some key vocabulary. Then we combined. Uh, 12, 13, and 14, and we started looking at the metal cup with double class and we're comparing data with other date classes. So I combined those, and then what we did is we took all the information, all the experiments, and we glued down this chart of everything that we have found to be true to then make our final scientific model. We came up with our final scientific model, and then what happened is the kids did the cold cup challenges in 15, 16, and 17. I combined that over over several days. And this was the plan for their experiment. And then we conducted a class experiment and compared data and who created the best design. And these abbreviations were the materials they used. And they answered these questions right here in their geo journal. What was the winning cup and their cup? 
So when we did this, and we did this whole unit, this is a sampling of one student who is highly organized. And I, you know, there's always those kids that have disorganized geo journals. And I can show you a class cabinet of some geo journals where there's, of course, kids, there's papers sticking out and all that. And we know that's part of just teaching kids skills. But we keep our geo journals in our cabinets to be able to use it at all times. Hopefully you find this helpful.